Uh, some things in music theory are better explained or shown on a piano than on a guitar. And above the keyboard imagery here, I have a sort of simplified mathematical version. A little closer look. From left to right, each key, black and white, raises the pitch or the frequency by the halftone interval. Uh, that's 2 to the 1 12th, or about 1.059. Another view, uh, this time with the natural form of the A minor. And it's pretty close to what I want, but the uh, line of frequencies could be larger and more legible. Here's a single octave version. The problem is to keep the good proportions on a cell phone size screen. And the way I learned the minors, there was two types. The relative, which has the same key signature as the major and the parallel, which has the same keynote as the major. And each type has the same three forms, natural, harmonic, and melodic. One way to figure out the relative minor, starting uh, with the major key on the circle of fifths, you count four letters clockwise, and that's the minor. So you count them out C, G, D, A, something like that. Usually you don't have to circle in front of you, so you remember what's in the circle, and you count them out like that. The relative generally means notes in common, and the natural relative minor has every note in common with its relative major. Here, a C major and A minor are the white keys on the piano, and you're just starting at a different place. It's a mode of C major. I'm not going to get into any further details at this time. Now here is that count again, and remember, we're not counting the number of shops or uh, the number of intervals. We're counting just the letter names. So you start with C as 1, G is 2, E is 3, A is 4, and that's the relative minor of C. A little closer look. And the other type of minor is a parallel minor, which has the same name as the C major. A general definition of parallel means running side by side, and uh, you know what the name is. It's the same name as the major. But what you want to find out here is the uh, key signature, uh, the uh, sharps and flats. Count four notes to the left on the circle of fifths. It's still left to right on the piano, and it turns out to be three flats. It's the uh, relative minor of E flat. It doesn't seem to be much used at uh, the introductory level, so I'm going to leave it here. But you will hear about it. Now, there are other methods for finding the relative minor. I had learned to count six notes up from the major, and that would be the relative minor. Uh, you could also count two notes backwards. Uh, here would, would be uh, CBA. If you read staff notation, the minor is either the next lower space or the next lower line below the major. Minors come in three forms, natural, harmonic, and melodic. And they all start the same with the whole step, half step, whole step. That's the lower tetrachord. Then there's a whole step link. And then they all end differently depending on function. And that is how they are used in the music. The natural minor is formed from the key signature alone and uh, ends with a half step, whole step, whole step. The harmonic form has a raised seventh. Now that is... In addition to the key signature, it has an accidental applied to the notation on the seventh note. So it ends with a half step, whole plus half step, and a half step. For the A minor, the G becomes a G sharp. And now we come to the third and final uh, form. It's the melodic, and this is the weirdest of all. Uh, on the way up the scale, or ascending, you raise both the 6th and 7th degree of the scale. And here, in this case, it's F and uh, G. You raise them with a sharp to F sharp and G sharp. And then on the way back down the scale, you return back to the uh, natural form, which is uh, without the sharps. And you've got to use a natural in the staff to do that. It's really weird. Here's a closer view. The top section shows the change in frequencies. The notation below shows the usual notation for a scale. The change is indicated by the accidentals, the sharps, and the naturals. 
And down below on the fretboard there, you see how the notes that are relevant to the scale change, whether ascending or descending. Now, you got to also know about double sharps and double flats. And you'll get them, especially in the more remote keys down there, which I gray out because I really never want to see these things again. But I probably won't get to be that lucky. I'll probably have to see them again. Here's an A minor pentatonic. A pentatonic derived from the Greek word for five. has five notes. And uh, this is just a one possibility. There are many. Hey, about all I'm doing here is testing out how it looks on this format I've developed. And next we come to the blues. Uh, it's a blue. It's an, actually not a scale. It's an inflection on another scale. Uh, I like blues, but uh, I'm going to have to study this up a little bit more before I talk about it. Some older animations comparing the guitar and keyboard. And again, I'm testing and experimenting how the visuals work on various devices and platforms. Here's the C major scale, starting at a frequency of 131 and going up to 262 cycles per second. That's one octave. Notice that that's all the white keys of the piano. And with two octaves, it goes up to approximately 523 cycles per second. Again, all the white keys. Now, here is a common way of playing a C major scale in the same frequency range, but without moving the arm all around, which is a skill in itself. You go straight across the fretboard in a box pattern. It looks squared off like a box. And note that the keyboard and staff stay exactly the same, and generally making the scales easier to read and play on a piano. Here is A minor, the relative minor of C major. Is G major, one octave, two octaves. And notice here we have the first sharp note. It's F sharp. And it's a lot easier to read and understand on the keyboard because of the black keys. It's F major, the first flat key. And notice again that amp on the keyboard there, that flat B flat is nicely set off by a black key. And down below on the fretboard... Uh, Things are pretty much all over the place, and you kind of want to memorize either the fretboard or the pattern, or better yet, both. Now this will take a closer look at deriving the key signatures, that's the sharps and flats, using the circle of fifths and fourths. The major scale pattern, or formula, is the top line. And starting with C, the C major letter spacing is next, and the C major notes on the fretboard are at the bottom. As you move around the circle, sharps and flats are added to the letter names to keep the major scale pattern. The frequencies stay the same on guitar and on piano. Uh, voice and other orchestral instruments do make slight adjustments to keep with the uh, Pythagorean and just intonation, and uh, they have to make slight adjustments when they play with guitar and piano. So, to get going here, from C, you count five letter names to G, and then you move the pattern and everything else so that they start on G. The circle indicates one sharp. The order of sharps and flats says it's F. An F is placed on the staff. And the formula is changed from an F to an F sharp. And down below there, the notes on the fretboard are changed from a C pattern to a G pattern with the F sharp noted. And F is changed to F sharp throughout the uh, musical range. And then you can keep going clockwise around a circle, uh, moving up by fifths, and then adding sharps to the seventh note of that pattern. And uh, until you get to like seven sharps, in which case you say, oh no, that's too much, nobody can read that. And then you start going the other way. Here is another version comparing the change on a piano keyboard. Starting with C, you count five letter names to the right to get to G. That's the fifth degree of the scale. Shift the major scale pattern, or formula, so that it starts on G. Next, you move the F, that's the seventh degree, to F sharp to keep the pattern. And to get the flat signatures, you count up four letter names and you get an F. You move the whole scale pattern up so it starts on F. The B has to be lowered to B-flat to keep the scale pattern. And once again, we'll take a little bit closer look on the keyboard. 
For the flat signatures, the pattern is shifted up a fourth, starting from C. You count four letter names or degrees to the right to get to F, and you shift the pattern, and then a lower B to B flat to keep the pattern. So that's why the uh, order of sharps and flats starts with a B flat when you start with the flat signatures. And you put the flat into this key signature there. Then the entire musical alphabet for this key now consists of A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G. B is no longer in the equation. And to stay in key on the fretboard, you play only the notes that are in or that fit that pattern. Now, you can go in either direction with the fourths and fifths. I'll show you that next. The reason I'm thinking of it here is uh, more for tonal center for chords, but I'm not really sure. I'm just going to put it out here and see what happens. Normally, you go up for fourths, and uh, you go to the left on the circle, but you can go down fifths and get to the F as well. Here's the math just for the fun of it. Up a fourth is the usual thing, I think. Just like C to G is the usual upper fifth. But of course you can go down a fourth and there's the math that shows how that works. Uh, so you can go either way. And um, just uh, I think you normally think of the uh, circle of fourths and fifths as going up fourths and up fifths to get to the key signature. However, if you're talking about chords and uh, that's the normal way you start out with the guitar playing pop music, you play chords, you play a song. Uh, I think you want to keep the idea of tonal center, keep the idea that the C is in between an F and a G, both above and below it. Uh, you play a lot of inverted chords, whatever, so it seems like it gives a lot of variety to which direction you're going. And really, when you play music, uh, you wouldn't wonder what the next note is going to be. And it could be either up or down or no change, and that's about it. Alternating the fifths and fourths up and down is an ancient uh, Chinese method of tuning. And I can use the idea here to demonstrate the reason for the order of sharps and flats in the key signature. A major scale pattern of whole and half intervals is fixed. The frequencies are fixed on guitar and piano by the uh, string links and fret spacing. And uh, the musical alphabet ABC was fixed by the Greeks when they invented the alphabet. What changes will be the key signature, where that's the sharps and flats, and the starting frequency. See, I always start with the same interval pattern. The same alteration is always applied to the same scale degree. Mathematically, it's an algorithm, and the sharps and flats accumulate in the order you see in the key signatures. Starting with the key of C, which has zero sharps and flats off to the left there, C equals 131. We're going to count up. Five letter names to G, that's C, D, E, F, G. G equals 196. We use that as the key. And you can see that the F, which is the seventh degree of the scale, no longer matches the pattern. So we have to adjust that by uh, adding a shop. Now, you could keep going clockwise around the circle, going up by fifths. But you could also count down the new musical alphabet as follows. G F sharp E D and that's what we're gonna do so now C equals 262 has to be raised a half step to C equals 277 to be the seventh degree of the major scale pattern so now we'll go up a fifth to the keynote of A and you can see that G has to be raised to G sharp and you can go up by fifths or down by fourths or any combination you want you're always going to add a sharp to the seventh degree to keep the major scale pattern going down a fourth from uh, a to e you get the d has to be sharped and that's enough sharps for me for now the flats go counterclockwise around the circle up a fourth or down a fifth starting again from C, which has no sharps or flats. The algorithm here flattens the fourth degree of the scale. Here's B to B flat, E to E flat, A to A flat, D to D flat, 
And that's enough flats for me for now. I'll show you where that last idea came from. This is about guitars, so I thought I'd try to eliminate the piano image. Turns out I can't. I can't do it entirely anyway. The problem is one of scale in the sense of visual proportions. I can't fit all these relations into a two octave image. The numbers and letters all get to be too small to read, and there are too many of them to really make sense of. So these are all experiments to see what images will work.